So there's a couple of things in the question that you just asked. One is the number of cases that are reported that are being reported as asymptomatic. Um, and so we hear from a number of countries that X number, X percentage of them are reported as not having symptoms or that they are in their pre-symptomatic phase, which means it's a few days before they actually develop severe s symptoms. In a number of countries, when we go back and we discuss with them, one, how are these asymptomatic cases being identified? Many of them are being identified through contact tracing, and so which is what we would want to see, in that you have a known case, you find your contacts, they're already in quarantine, hopefully, and some of them are tested, and then you, you pick up people who may have asymptomatic or no uh, symptoms or even mild symptoms. The other thing we're finding is that when we actually go back and say how many of them were truly asymptomatic, we find out that many have really mild disease, very mild disease. Um, they're not quote unquote COVID symptoms, meaning they may not have developed fever yet, they may not have had a significant cough, or they may not have shortness of breath, but some may have mild disease. Having said that, we do know that there can be people that are truly asymptomatic and PCR positive. The second part of your question is, what proportion of asymptomatic individuals actually transmit? So the way that we look at that is we look at, um, they need, these individuals need to be followed carefully um, over the course of uh, when they're detected and looking at secondary transmission. We have a number of reports from countries who are doing very detailed contact tracing. They're following asymptomatic cases, they're following contacts, and they're not finding secondary transmission onward. It's very rare. And that not, m much of that is not published in the, in the literature. From the papers that are published, there is one that came out from Singapore uh, looking at a long-term care facility. There are some household transmission studies where you follow individuals over time and you look at the proportion of those that transmit onwards. Um, we are constantly looking at this data and we're trying to get more information from countries to truly answer this question. It still appears to be rare that an asymptomatic individual actually transmits onward. What we really want to be focused on are, is following the symptomatic cases. If we followed all of the symptomatic cases because we know that this is a respiratory pathogen, it passes from an individual through infectious droplets. If we actually followed all of the symptomatic cases, isolated those cases, followed the contacts and quarantined those contacts, we would drastically reduce. I would love to be able to give a proportion of how much transmission we would actually stop but it would be a drastic reduction in transmission. If we could focus on that, I think we would, we would do very, very well in terms of suppressing transmission. But from the data we have, it still seems to be rare that an asymptomatic person actually transmits onward to a secondary individual.